There are strong chances that uh, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa will get another term in office. He's been president since 2016 in Portugal. Now, under previous presidential elections, the president's always been elected in the first round, so there hasn't been a three-week wait for a second round to be held. This time it's a little bit different because of the COVID-19 crisis, the pandemic, the lockdown uh, in Portugal. The big question today is... What is turnout going to be? The higher the abstention rate, the more likely it is that there could be a second round. For the moment, uh, the outgoing president is credited with 58% of the vote. That's far ahead of his two main challengers, Ana Gomez of the Socialist Party, who's given uh, 15%. And uh, Andre Ventura of the far right, who's given 10 percent. So it looks like he will get an automatic re-election after the first round. But if there is, for example, a 70 percent abstention rate today because people are too scared to go out and vote because they think they might catch the virus, then that will probably make the second round almost inevitable. So we'll know later today whether uh, Marcelo Rebelo de Souza has been re-elected. A very popular president, uh, someone who uh, we've seen in the media uh, who has been queuing for the supermarket in his shorts, for example. He was uh, seen jumping into the sea to save uh, some girls whose canoe had capsized. Uh, he's been seen also having uh, a meal with homeless people. So really a man of the people, someone who is very much appreciated by uh, the Portuguese to such an extent that the Socialist Party has sort of given up on even presenting a candidate for uh, this presidential election. And Anna Gomez from the Socialist Party is like a, a rebel candidate for that party because uh, they said, well, it's so certain uh, that uh, President Bello Tassuta is going to be re-elected that we're not even going to put, put forward a, a candidate for this election. Now, a lot of attention is being paid to this 38-year-old Andre Ventura, the head of the far-right Chega party, which means enough. What, uh, what can you tell us about him? Well, there are a lot of uh, political commentators wondering how well he is going to do today. There has never really been any far-right contender in Portugal since the end of uh, the uh, dictatorship of uh, Salazar back in 1974. Uh, only one time with one candidate who was uh, a former skinhead who was uh, 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 sentenced to uh, uh, a prison term for racist comments. Uh, so uh, the far-right needed a presentable candidate to to, uh, try to uh, put forward their ideas, and they found that uh, in Andre Ventura. He has done all sorts of different things in his life. He was a former theology student. He was even going to go in to be a priest, but fell in love with a woman, so that put paid to that. Uh, he was a former law student. He was a former university professor. He was a former football commentator. Uh, and so he's made himself into a household name, and he's created this party, having been with the centre-right PSD party, he broke away from there, created this far-right party called Shega, which means enough, where he's putting forward a much more far-right nationalist agenda, anti-abortion, anti-immigrant, anti-Zigan, uh, and for a Europe of nations. He's already been met by Marine Le Pen of the far right uh, here in France, who's keen to seduce the one million or so Portuguese in France to vote for her. So the question now is, having won 1%, been elected to, to the parliament in Portugal, how is he going to do today? There are, there was reasonably, he might get 10%. He's far behind the outgoing president, but this will be a very important milestone in the, in the return of the far right uh, to Portugal for the first time since 1974.